When it comes to um, large assembly language programs, one of the uh, difficult things uh, when I started to learn assembly language was to display uh, numbers because in uh, languages like uh, C we are uh, used to writing a lot of uh, printf's. However, in assembly language uh, there is no easy way to directly uh, display a number. So uh, I'm going to create a series of um, uh, movies uh, where uh, I'm showing how to display numbers in different ways in assembly language. So for this first movie I'm uh, going to show you how to display uh, hexadecimal uh, numbers. So uh, this is uh, the main program. In the previous video I've shown you how to um, uh, split a very large program into multiple files and uh, assemble them and link them together. So uh, I have here the main uh, program display numbers. Uh, I also have here uh, linux.asm uh, which uh, contains the OS console write function which uh, simply uh, displays a string using a syscall. In uh, previous videos I've shown you how to do this uh, also for uh, Windows and for MS-DOS but today uh, I'm uh, working on Linux and uh, I have this to string which will convert a number uh, to a string uh, and uh, display numbers will display the result. So let's see what uh, we obtain. Uh, this is the result and what are these uh, numbers? They are defined here at the end. So uh, in uh, decimal we have 1, 100, 1,000, 433, uh, 99,999 uh, and uh, in my case it will end when uh, it sees a 0. Uh, so again, if we look at the output, uh, this is the output uh, corresponding to those numbers in uh, hexadecimal. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to display uh, also in uh, decimal, but in some cases, uh, you probably want to see uh, what's in there in hexadecimal. So first, uh, let's take a look at uh, this program. Uh, what it does is uh, first uh, declaring some external functions from uh, the other files. Uh, obviously today we are interested in this uh, unsight int 32 to hex string uh, and I'm going to discuss it uh, very soon. Uh, and we have here a call to OS in it but this actually does nothing in my case. Uh, and uh, we are uh, storing in uh, uh, the register RDI uh, the address of our data, so this one here. Uh, then we have this uh, display loop uh, and uh, what I'm doing is uh, call clear line. This is actually defined here uh, and what it does is uh, it clears a buffer. Uh, then uh, in EAX I am uh, moving the current number to be displayed. Uh, I'm testing if uh, it's a zero and if it's zero it jumps to done. Uh, and in R8 uh, I'm uh, moving the buffer and then I'm calling uh, this function which will actually store the hexadecimal representation of the number in uh, the buffer T line. Okay, and this is why uh, I had to clear uh, the buffer first. And then uh, the line is displayed uh, using uh, OS console write and I have a video detailing this function if uh, you are not familiar with it. Uh, and uh, finally it will go to the next uh, element and jump to the loop and so on. And finally uh, it will exit the program. Uh, also this part here should probably be moved uh, to my linux.asm but it's currently here. 
So now uh, let's take a look at the buffer in the, the clear line. So the buffer is this one. Uh, and uh, I've uh, placed a bunch of uh, X characters here. Uh, this uh, doesn't mean anything. It's uh, just a way for me to see if uh, the program works. Uh, actually, 32-bit uh, uh, hexadecimal number uh, will require only uh, eight uh, characters, but uh, here I have 16 characters. And I also have a 10, which is a new line uh, character. So clear line, uh, what it does, it uh, copies space character. So 20 hexadecimal is a space character. But uh, I'm using the rocks register. So we actually have here eight space characters. And it's uh, copying uh, these uh, characters here. So after clear line instead of X's, uh, we'll have here uh, spaces. And uh, since I'm copying uh, eight uh, characters at a time, it's important that uh, the size, the number of X's here in the buffer, is actually a multiple of eight. As I said, uh, we have here 16 uh, characters. Uh, but of course, this function can be uh, perhaps more easily implemented by writing uh, space uh, at a time. But this way it's, uh, I think, more efficient. So now uh, let's take a look at uh, the actual uh, number conversion. So uh, I actually have uh, in this file two functions. Uh, the first one converts an uh, unsigned integer 4, so that's 4 bits, uh, to a hex string. And uh, this is uh, supposed to be stored in the AL register. And in uh, register R8, uh, remember we are uh, in 64-bit mode, register R8 uh, we have the uh, string position where the output uh, will be placed and also uh, following uh, the execution of this uh, root line uh, in AL uh, we'll have the hex digit as a character and uh, R8 will be incremented uh, to the next uh, position so let's take a look. It's quite simple. Um, first, I'm uh, making sure that uh, in AL we have indeed uh, only the last uh, four bits. And then I'm uh, comparing with uh, 10 or 0a hexadecimal uh, in order to see uh, if we need uh, to generate a digit uh, between 0 and 9 or a uh, character between A and F. So in the first uh, case here, uh, we have uh, a number that's, uh, that corresponds to A, B, C, D, E, or F. So I'm adding uh, to the actual number the letter uh, A uh, minus uh, 10. Uh, Y minus 10 because uh, for example, in uh, AL, if we have 10, uh, then we want this to become A. So we add A minus 10. So the result would be uh, 10 plus A minus 10. So it will be A. Also, if we have, for example, 11, uh, then we'll have 11 plus A minus 10, which will be A plus 1 which will be B, and this is correct, and so on for the rest of the characters until F. In this uh, second branch here, uh, if the number was uh, smaller than 10, uh, then we simply add uh, the character 0. So, for example, if uh, we had uh, in AL uh, actually 0, then we add character 0, the result will be the character 0. 
and if we had, for example, five, uh, the result will be the character uh, five. Uh, finally, uh, we place the result in AL to uh, the address uh, that's in R8, and we increment R8, as we mentioned here. And we return uh, from this root type. Now, the second root time, which is uh, more interesting, it will convert a 32-bit unsigned integer to a hexadecimal uh, string. And we see here that we have as input in EAX uh, the value to be converted, and in R8 uh, we have the string position. And uh, in output uh, we'll have uh, R8 plus 8, but uh, nothing else. This means no other registers uh, will be affected by uh, this row type. So what I've done here, uh, first I'm uh, saving uh, rocks and RCX on the stack uh, because I'm then going to use them and I want to make sure uh, when uh, we return uh, they will be also restored. And you can see here uh, the end of the routine, we restore RCX and rocks. Uh, remember, uh, we push uh, in order rocks and RCX, but we need to pop them uh, in uh, the reverse order, so that's why first RCX and rocks. Uh, also, in uh, CL, I'm moving, uh, I'm starting with value 32. I'm pushing again rocks. Uh, remember, this is. Uh, our value at this point and now I have here this uh, loop where I'm uh, uh, basically uh, getting my current value from the stack uh, I'm um, shifting uh, EAX by the number in uh, CR, CL so initially this was 32 but uh, now here I'm subtracting 4 so this will be uh, 28, so I'm basically selecting the last uh, four uh, bits. Uh, now I'm calling uh, the previous routine, which uh, will convert uh, four bits uh, to string. Uh, again, remember that we have rocks, uh, which is the 64-bit register, but uh, it can be addressed as uh, EAX, uh, also as AX, and also as AL. Uh, so AL will be the lower 8 bits, uh, AX uh, 16 bits, EAX 32 bits, and ROX the full 64 bits. Okay, so uh, after uh, this shift right here in AL, uh, we have uh, what we need. So the four bits to be displayed and uh, then after it was displayed uh, I'm checking here if uh, we still have uh, remaining bits in CL and uh, if we do uh, then uh, I'm uh, continuing uh, this uh, routine so Again, why uh, here we need to pop racks, push racks, uh, because of this uh, shift right. Yeah. And here we are losing uh, bits, uh, bits that are shifted uh, right. Okay, so each time uh, I have the initial value in racks, I'm uh, pushing it back on the stack in order to keep it there for the next uh, iteration. Okay. Uh, also, uh, remember that in uh, the 4-bit uh, string routine, uh, we are also incrementing uh, R8 register to the next position. So we don't need here to move to the next position because it's already happening here. Uh, again, here uh, we are making sure that uh, we use uh, only uh, relevant uh, four bits uh, from the AL uh, register by uh, starting here with AND AL0F. Okay. 
and uh, so we are actually using the output uh, of uh, RA to be incremented from this function, uh, but uh, we do not uh, actually use uh, the returned value in AL because this is already placed in the string here, so uh, we don't do anything with uh, that one. Okay, and finally we are uh, removing from the stack the working uh, rocks and we are also restoring uh, the other registers, RCX and again RAX. Uh, of course, this is probably redundant here, this spoke RAX, and probably this one is sufficient, but uh, uh, being a very simple uh, program, I just wanted to make sure that uh, it was not affected, and uh, this is uh, how I wrote it. Okay, so... Um, now let's also take a look at the main display loop. Uh, so again, I'm uh, starting with uh, clearing the buffer here. So placing uh, space characters in the buffer. Again, this is probably not needed uh, because uh, each time we are displaying eight characters, which will be zero or uh, some decimal value so we don't really need to clear uh, the line uh, then um, I'm uh, selecting the, in EAX the current value pointed by RDI which is our uh, data uh, if we encounter uh, a zero value then it will stop otherwise uh, it will uh, place the buffer address in R8 and call uh, the uh, hexadecimal uh, function. And finally, uh, this will be written uh, to the console. Okay, uh, so uh, of course you can play with uh, this function. This can be uh, made uh, simpler. Uh, maybe it can be moved um, also uh, you should always make sure that uh, you allocate enough space uh, in the buffer in order not to get a buffer overflow that's actually the reason why I have here 16 characters even though I only need eight characters so I was just being extra safe when uh, I wrote this program okay so thank you for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, so please like and subscribe and uh, leave me any comments. And of course, see you next time. Bye.